Dudes, dudettes, how's it going? Hopefully having a wicked one wherever you are in the world. Obviously, Scott Ivan here for scottsbasslessons.com and today I'm going to be talking about my six-step formula for learning songs. Now, the reason I want to do this is right now I've been tasked with the challenge of learning 18 brand new songs for Players Path, which is in the SBL membership. And Players Path essentially is the first online performance-based learning system for bass players and we're doing a ton of upgrades for it and these songs are going in there there's nine levels there's a bunch of stuff it's very cool you should check it out over at scottsbassessons.com if you haven't already but as i'm going through this it's really hard because obviously i've got 18 songs to learn and i thought it'd be cool to share with you guys my exact process when i'm doing this because when you've got a bunch of songs to learn you better have a system to back you up otherwise you're going to get in a total mess so with that said Let's do it. Okay, so before we get into this tutorial, I also want to give you a shout and let you know that you can grab all of it. You can grab the song, the backing track that with the bass, the backing track without the bass, so the play along. You can also get the full tab and notation as well for the song that I'm going to be learning today. You can get it all totally for free via the download link below. So you can give this a go yourself. Just a heads up though, this is taken from level eight of Players Path. So it's it's tricky, there's nine levels in Player's Path, which is obviously the learning system within Scott's Bass Lessons. This is from level eight, just, you know, so it's gonna be a little tricky. There's some really fun triplet bits that I'm gonna talk about, and uh, specifically how I use a metronome to learn them as well, and uh, a ton of stuff. So if you wanna get that download, the download link is below. So let's get into this six step process. And obviously the track I'm gonna be using today is, I've got a chart for it, okay? So this is my process of learning a song when I have a chart. Now before I even get to step one, there's actually a step zero. I don't know why I was doing it. Step zero. Step zero is getting myself prepared, the preparation. I don't mean actually practicing, I mean getting my technology together, okay? So I've got a chart, you know, that's number one, okay? Number two is I've got a metronome also available to me because when I hit tricky rhythms or anything like that, I actually like to use a metronome to help me practice that at a slower tempo and then just crank it up. And I've also got my MP3s available. So right here, up in the left-hand corner of my desktop, I've got the full track with the bass. And then I've also got the bassless track as well because obviously I'm gonna have to come up with the goods, I'm gonna have to play the bass. Now, step one is actually not even listening to the track, okay? Step one is looking to see what time signature it's in, what, what's the meter, okay? So right up here, we can see it's in 4-4, great. That means that I don't need to worry about it being in 7-8 or 11 or nine or whatever it is, right? It's 4-4 and by the looks of it, I'll probably, normally I do have a scan through to see if there's any time signature changes. There isn't, so hey-ho, everything's cool there. Next thing, before I even listen to or touch the instrument, okay, next thing I'm gonna look for is the key signature as well, because if something's in a really obvious key, I'm gonna wanna know about it. I don't wanna know if there's any sharps or flats or anything like that. Now, there isn't on this piece, okay? So immediately, some of you might think, well, that's in the key, C, okay? well. Hold your horses. The composer might have actually not put the, C, the key signature in because maybe it's actually moving through multiple key signatures. So when a piece moves through multiple key signatures, what generally happens is they sometimes tend to write in the accidentals. So let's take a look. Obviously we've got sharps here, and we've got flats here. My we've got sharps. So my assumption is it's actually moving through key centers. So I'm not gonna assume it's in the key of C. I'm just gonna wait and see what happens when I press play. Up to now, we've got the desktop sorted. We've got everything we need. We know that it's in 4-4 all the way through. And we know that the accidentals are written in. Now, normally when I'm looking at a chart, I haven't got the tab and notation. I'm generally just looking at the notation. 
but we have actually got the tab here as well, but I'm not really looking at that. If I'm doing a show or something like that, I ain't gonna have a tab, it's just gonna be notation. So just bear that in mind. So step one, time signature. Step two, key signature. Step three is actually listen to the track all the way through. And while I'm listening through, I'm looking at the chart. I'm not gonna sit through the entire track because it's three minutes long, but I'll give you an example and talk as I'm going about stuff that I might be looking out for, okay? so. So I'm looking at the chart, obviously two bar counting. Three, four, second bar. Now I might be thinking to myself, oh, I really wanna stop and work that out because it seems quite complex. I'm not gonna do that. This is, that's a secondary thing. First, the initial thing is, in my mind, I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna listen through, I'm not gonna freak out. I'm just gonna get a general feel for it. Now it's onto this, sec this repeated section here, and again. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, there's that little gooda, gooda, gooda coming up as well, like in the repeat, so I might just mentally make that note. Mm. Again, mental note made. Okay. This all seems pretty easy. Back into this bit. So at the minute I'm just thinking to myself, oh, I wonder what these bits are all about. Coming up, two, three, four. Whoa. Okay, this sounds crazy. It's obviously still in the same. Oh, wow. Okay. Right now I'm just thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking that's gonna be hard, that's gonna be fun. And then I would sit like this and go through the entire piece. Now, the next step is going through it and I'm not really looking to learn any of the parts in any depth. I'm just dipping my toe in the water. So this is the next step, step four, right? We listen through and then we stop as we go and investigate, okay? We listen and then we investigate. So again, let's take it back to the beginning. It was pretty simple when it started off. A two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, boom. So, okay, so and then I stop it, and I'm like, okay, so what is that? So it's open. Okay, so it's like a, it's like the police thing, right? Message in the bottle, right? So that's, I always think about that when I think about nines. What I'm checking is, I'm actually just checking to see if that pattern's moving. And then we've got, um, and then we've got, okay, so it's, with the same rhythmical pattern. Wicked, and then it goes into this next bit. Now this bit, I'm not really bothered about. It's a shuffle, right? Now remember that the last time it went by, the first time we listened to it, I made a note, mental note of that. Now I'm waiting for it. I'm like, okay. Here we go. Okay, so what is that? Okay. The first thing I thought actually when I played it is I'm not going to be able to pick all of that individually. So I need to be able to use hand runs and pull offs to be able to play that up to speed. Then it carries on. Happens again. Oh, I messed it up. Now step five is where I have to learn all of the individual pieces that need care and attention. All of these bits, like for instance, if we look at the this first part, that wasn't so hard. 
Um, this little line, you know, I might look at how to execute that a little bit better because it was a little bit ropey when I did it. Now this bit, this is like a step five thing. Okay, I need to learn this because there's no way I'm going to feel that. So this is when it's like metronome time for me. Okay, it's really tricky because it feels like it goes into a different time signature. I always think like one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplets. If you're part of the SBL membership, you'll have access to this metronome. Just click the thing, go to Groove Trainer down here, and then it'll bring you to this. It's also got like a drum looper in there as well. So you can loop drums and a drum machine and stuff like that. Anyway, so I'll put it up 110. Okay, and also I'm gonna to wanna to change the subdivision to triplets. Here we go. Step six is actually pulling it all together. Okay, so once you've gone through each of the individual part, the harder parts and really learned them in isolation, you can play them confidently with a metronome, then it's time to step six, go through the entire piece and just pull it all together. So step one is the time signature. Step two is the key signature. Step three is just listening through and getting a general feel for what's going on whilst looking at the actual chart. Step four is listening through at, at, at that second time and doing a little bit of investigation into the areas that are gonna be troublesome. And step five is really digging into them and getting that metronome out and nailing them down. And then obviously step six is pulling the entire thing together and nailing it. Now remember, all of this stuff is available for you to download as well. We don't usually do this. Usually it's all just in player's path, but we just wanted to do something cool for you guys and give you access to this track. Again, you can get the play along, you can get it with the bass, and you can get all the sheet music as well if you want to do so. And if you do, if you if you do it, man, tag me on Instagram just at, at Scott's Bass Lessons uh, and we'll, we'll see it and we can share it and all of that cool stuff as well. So we can show the entire bass community what you've been doing and how you've been playing and stuff like that. Now it goes without saying if you've not been to scottsbasslessons.com go check it out we've got courses from some of the best bass educators on the planet we've also got Players Path which is the first online performance based learning system for bass players getting you in contact with the right material at the right time and giving you the ability to measure your progress along the way and so you understand where you are as a player and exactly where you're going and how you're going to get there and a ton of other stuff as well. We do live streams and stuff like that. You can grab a 14 day free trial actually. And I will put a link to that below. Now with that said, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.